Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, this is part of a series. If you have not seen the other videos yet, I will add uh, links to them in the description of this video. But uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Lake Vermilion and the muskie population there and kind of what's happened to it over time. Uh, I got my buddy Nolan Reba here uh, to, he's going to help me uh, explain a few things here. We when we get into some data and stuff that he helped uh, compile. Actually, he helped compile like pretty much all of this, by the way. So thank you for doing that, Nolan. Oh, no problem. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm gonna kind of jump right in. Uh, and I'll just say this, that this is kind of, uh, maybe part of the reason I put this off for a little while is I have mixed emotions about this. I actually am a, am a, a full-time musky guide and I guide on Lake Vermilion. Um, and so, uh, you know, some of the things I'm going to tell you, I worry, like, are people still going to want to go fishing with me, you know, after I tell them, like, you know, the truth about Lake Vermilion. And the truth is, by the way, we still like I, you know, I just finished a long stint there. And most days we caught muskies. There are a lot of one fish days, but we, and we put in a lot of hours. Um, and, but I'll be the first one to tell you that like the lake is nowhere near what it once was. It used to be a lot easier to catch them. And we were a lot less good of guides back, you know, in the day too, as far as just the electronics and equipment that we had to work with compared to what we have now. If it wasn't for technology, uh, I don't know that we'd be catching any, but you know, there's some pretty um, uh, amazing advances that have happened in uh, fishing electronics in the last few years that have you know, kind of helped us continue to put fish in the boat, even though the population is lower. Um, you know, and also not everyone can afford that, right? It, it, and it would be nice if we could manage the lake in a way where, where anybody who, you know, has some musky equipment and wants to go out and give it a try um, has, stands a reasonable chance at catching one. So um, before this video, the last couple I did, we talked about Lake Mille Lacs and kind of what happened to its population. And I just want to start with um, some of that kind of eventually transfers over to what happened on Lake Vermilion because when Lake Mille Lacs kind of tailed off and took a big nosedive, all the, the people that that giant lake was absorbing as far as from a fishing pressure standpoint, they had to go somewhere. And Lake Vermilion was kind of really the next, you know, the next domino, the next place basically to go that, you know, that was going to fall is, an, is a big lake with also a, an amazing world-class musky fishery. Um, but we're going to kind of just get into the stocking of Lake Vermilion first. I want to show you kind of what happened. So um, a lot of people don't know this, by the way, but they actually stocked muskies, not a very significant amount, but they did put some muskies back in the 60s and it was a shoe pack strain. Um, so we, I, I didn't want to pretend like that that didn't exist, but uh, but they, you know, not a very significant amount. Um, and the Leech Lake strain fish didn't really start going in until 1987. And you can see this big, tall bar graph we have. And kind of similar to the story uh, that we told on Mille Lacs, a little bit different. But you can see um, this is broken down in eight-year segments. So, you know, that, that first eight-year run was, was a very significant, you know, amount compared to, you know, 1995 through 2002. And then you can see it, you know, it dropped off even further um, in 2003 and in 2010. So I'm just going to show you a few different looks at this. So um, here's kind of the same data, but broken down in four year segments, um, just so you can kind of see how everything shakes down that way. Um, you can still kind of see that there's, there's a pretty big uh, decrease that happens from 19, you know, 94 all the way through 2006 time frame and then a really kind of big gap in 2011 to 14 here as well um if we shrink it down to two-year segments you you know you can you can see even even more details here and i actually i think the next slide i took this the same information and just put into a line graph so that you can um, you know, you can see the zero here too, where there's a two year period where there was just no fish um, caught. And by the way, I know some of you might be wondering like, well, why don't you just do it like every year? Um, the reason we kind of, uh, the, the farthest, farthest we can really shrink it down is to like two year segments is because um, most of the lakes when they get stocked, 
uh, for the most part in the past have always been in an every other year rotation. And so, you know, the, the line graph would just be all over the place, up and down with a zero and then all the way back up really high. So it's a lot easier to just do, you know, a two year average to kind of show you a true picture of what's going on. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, a very similar story. There's a lot of fish, right, that went in in this time frame, and then they, they kind of scaled it way back. And we're going to jump into the next slide. Um, this is, again, the, uh, the Muskies Inc. Lunge Log database, which records all the muskies. Um, out of, this is just out of Lake Vermilion that were caught and recorded each year. Um, and you can see, you know, uh, again, there's a very big rise, uh, you know, that, that peaks out in 2006 and then starts to dip a bit, you know, in seven and eight. And then it, you know, really starts to, uh, to plunge down. Sorry, I had a, a noise distract me over there. My water bottle popped. Um, anyway, I'm going to kind of jump to uh, the next slide, which is I did this one on on the lax as well, but it's kind of like to me, it's again a you know a, a a pretty simple case of like here are the muskies going in over here on the left, the stocking, and here they are, you know, coming out over here with us catching them. Keep in mind though, there's always that delay. It takes them, you know, 10 to 15 years to really, you know, grow up, uh, which which gives us something else we can look at, which is kind of where Nolan's going to come into the picture here. Um, while he helped compile all these um, charts and graphs, he also created um, this mortality model. And, and Nolan, I just wanted to clarify, you, you pretty much used, we're kind of using the same model just for consistency that you used um, when we did the Mille Lacs data, correct? Yep, that's right. Yep, the, uh, the model just takes the, uh, the fish that are stocked and then calculates how many are still alive at each age. Uh, based on an annual mortality rate, uh, and the uh, the mortality rate uh, was taken as kind of an average number from uh, from a few different studies that we looked at before. Uh, so, and it is the same. We use the same model uh, for this one as with uh, Malax. Right, but it is kind of the average of like several different. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we we know every lake is going to be a little bit different with that. Uh, but, you know, we took uh, the best guess based on uh, a couple of cases where they have actually figured it out uh, mm -hmm. for specific lakes. You know, right. so I think like, for example, in this one, uh, when they're adults, we have a 85% uh, annual survival, mm -hmm. you know, just, just as an example. Right. Uh, but there's, okay. there's a, a rate for every year and, uh, you know, those rates were chosen based on the, uh, the studies that we were able to find, you know. Yeah, and thanks for doing that. And just, I just want to clarify too, to make sure I'm looking at this correctly. But uh, if I remember correctly from the last time we did this, this, this blue line uh, up on the top kind of represents the, the, the entire like number of muskies that are alive. And then these yeah, bottom lines are more by, by year classes. Like the green line is the, the mm -hmm. really big one. The adults that are over like eight or 15 it is right yep yep exactly so the the key is in the upper right uh basically uh you know the eight, age five plus is supposed to be you know the number of uh catchable adults more or less and mm -hmm. uh and then you know the the other uh ones are breakdowns into different you know size or age age ranges so the uh the big old ones would be in the in the green look there like right. you were saying Right. Okay. So now what's kind of interesting is we can, we can take this and you can see the model also kind of tells the story, right? As far as like the population was high and then it eventually starts to, uh, starts to dip down. Um, and something that I did that's kind of interesting is I just kind of put, put that model side by side with that lunge log data that I showed you previously, the number of fish that were, that were actually recorded and caught. And, and I just think it's really interesting um, that, you know, I, like the, I circled this in pink here, the, this four year span here where it kind of shows it dipping down and it, it's mirrored here. And this, this, this one year, 2013, I circle that, that year is probably inflated because, um, that particular year, Muskie's Inc. had, um, 
they call it the chapter challenge, but all the Muskies Inc. chapters from all over the United States came to Lake Vermilion that year to fish in this tournament. So there were, you know, a lot more Muskies Inc. members fishing there for an entire week that that all register fish in that database. So that, that year's probably inflated. The level of the other ones. Right. Yeah. Yep. It'd probably be down here. Um, and then, uh, and then on again, you know, you look at this where it bottoms out um, on the mortality model in 2018 and in 2019. And uh, the same thing happens on the catches here. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting because we we saw a pretty similar correlation when we kind of compared the model to what happened on the lax and the catches there, as far as it being able to predict, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when things were about to go bad, um, you know, before they did. Well, so so one, one quick uh, question here. So if you see the uh, the red curve, you know, that's kind of the younger catchable fish that that mm -hmm. peaks early on. And uh, in the report reported catches in uh, musky zinc, uh, you don't see that there. Is that because there was not that much fishing pressure in that in those years? Exactly. I think you'll see that. I mean, I think that happened on Mille Lacs too. Um, it's it's. I think that that yeah. I think that if if the same amount of people that were fishing in 2007 mm -hmm. were fishing on Lake Vermilion in like 2000, 2001, 2003, this yeah. peak would be way higher than where it's at in 2007. It was just like that. Mm -hmm that, you know, as these new lakes that were stocked became, you know, world-class fisheries and word traveled and, you know, mm -hmm. things spread on the internet and everything else, um, you know, the, the pressure, all the people came. And so, especially including the Muskie Zinc members. And so, and that is like, I mean, and I've admitted that before, that is like one of the kind of the flaws with the data set a little bit is, is it's also more tells a tale in fishing pressure, you know, and part of that might also, you could argue be that, you know, maybe on some of these lower years, part of the reason it's lower is because when it was like, you know, when the, when the bite starts to taper off for a number of years in a row, the fishing pressure probably, you know, becomes less too. So then there's less fish being reported. Um, so, you know, eventually it could possibly go the other way. Although if you ask me, <laughs> at least, the, you know, in the last two years, because of COVID-19, the fishing pressure has been you know, insane on Lake Vermilion again, um, just because of the, the border being closed and, you know, Lake Vermilion kind of being a, you know, at least it feels like you're in Canada if you're not uh, mm -hmm. from, a, from a scenery standpoint. So um, I also wanted to respond to just a few of the, um, the questions and comments that I've seen on the other videos, because I, I know some people are probably wondering, like, why are you making these videos? Uh, and the, the reason why is, so while the lakes have been managed a certain way, the DNR in Minnesota is in the process of making a new long range plan right now, it is in the works, okay? And probably whatever gets decided in that plan is gonna be what we're stuck with, good or bad, for quite some time to come. Um, you know, for me personally, that'll probably affect, you know, the musky fishing that I'm able to experience in my lifetime for the rest of it. Um, and I mean, in a lot of this, we're, we're trying to think, you know, further ahead than that anyway. Um, also, Lake Vermilion's current management plan also goes through 2022. So there could potentially be changes coming, good, bad, or otherwise with that as well. Um, I also saw several comments from people about like, oh, you know, this is really good information. Maybe you should share it with the DNR. I assure you that I have been sharing this information with the DNR. I've been to a lot of meetings. Uh, pretty much everything that you've seen in this presentation so far and everything you've seen in the Mille Lacs presentations was communicated with DNR managers eight years ago, okay? So this has been like an eight year mission and not just for me. There's a lot of people who, who care about this, who have been communicating with them and been at it. Um, we all try to anytime there's like an input committee for one of these lakes, um, you know, we all try to get in, right? There's an application process. And, you know, if we're lucky, like one, one person who's a really avid, you know, uh, musky angler kind of kind of gets into the lake management group and, and hopefully it can be a sounding board for the rest of us. Um, but I also wanted to share some good news because I, I know there's a lot of negative comments um, about the DNR. And while 
obviously just what I told you, I get, I get frustrated at times, but um, because of all those people <clears throat> being involved over the last eight years, they did make some changes um, on Vermilion that started in 2017. Uh, so the stocking did get increased uh, to 3000 fish uh, every year now, instead of skipping. And then it can get up to an additional 2000 surplus fish um, in any kind of two year period, but, but like 8,000 is kind of the max that it can get. So, um, so that's good. You know, we're going to start, you know, seeing, and maybe already are starting to see a few of those early year classes. I know, um, even though it wasn't an official increase, I know in 2015, it got a really good stocking as well. Um, and I think we're starting to see some of those fish in the system right now come up through the ranks too, but I did want to show you um, so this, this is the, the same stocking, the two year stocking averages that I showed you. And so the current increase that it's on for 2017 to 2022 basically is saying, Hey, we're going to try to stock, you know, the two year average will be somewhere in this yellow range here, either at the bottom of it, or if we're lucky at the top of it, um, keeping in mind that, you know, last year, because of COVID, they did not do an, an egg take. So you know, Lake Vermilion got zero muskies in 2020. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless it gets 8,000 fish this year, it's not gonna, you know, probably make that quota this time around either. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, you know, a very similar story. It, it, it's, uh, you know, what goes in is what comes out. Hey, and, uh, can, you, can you go back to that real quick? Yeah. I just wanted to point out one thing. Sure. That, uh, you know, the, uh, those years where it got a lot of fish, you know, that is not an unusual stocking level for a lake in Minnesota. You know, the standard, the sort of standardized rate that lakes get is uh, one fish per littoral acre uh, right. every two years. And uh, uh, Vermilion is what, 40,000 acres and the, what, 15,000 littorals? Yep, I think it's right around 15. So those peak years, years are actually right around the, the standard rate uh, for, for lakes in Minnesota. Uh, and what the yellow band is, is really about half of that. So it's, you know, right. it's, it's and not that's what like- the, that's what the increase is, right? And so, right, right. Um, and so, you know, part of the reason I, uh, that, that, that we're doing those, these videos is I am trying to, you know, rally the troops. Um, and in the description of this video, I will, I will put some contact information if you would like to, um, to reach out to the DNR. And, you know, because while there's a bunch of us that have been doing this for eight years, I think the more of us that have this information um, and are communicating, you know, our concerns with the DNR and hopefully do it respectfully too, because by the way, um, like the, the, the manager at, at, at the DNR, like, you know, we, we, we all kind of expressed our concerns and it, it, it took a number of years, but then in 2015, like I said, it got a bigger stocking. And then in 2017, they did make an increase. And while it wasn't as much as we all had hoped for, it was at least like, acknowledging that they were like listening to us um, and, you know, and making a change. And so my hope is if maybe more of you are more low, you know, vocal about it and, and, and would like to see more fish than what it's getting now. Um, and we reach out that maybe, maybe they'll listen again and maybe we'll, we'll get another increase. Um, also, <clears throat> I'll also just a reminder, uh, if you'd like the video, hit the like button. Um, I'm planning on doing more of these because there's a bigger story to be told here. I kind of just have to do it one domino at a time. And Lake Mille Lacs and Lake Vermilion were kind of the first two dominoes to fall and it, and it kind of just keeps going and it affects everything else in the state. Um, and so I'll, I'll try to start cranking these out with a little uh, higher level of frequency now if I can get uh, no one to help me keep crunching numbers here like he has um, in the past. So Nolan, thank you for doing that, by the way, um, and, and putting all that time in. And thank you for joining me tonight. You got anything else to add before we sign off? Uh, no, not really. That's, uh, I think the story is, is pretty clear. It's always nice when you get, uh, you know, data from two sources to match up like that. It kind of right. tells a coherent story and it, it makes sense 
consistent with your experience on the water, with many people's experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, got to get more fish in there. That's pretty much all there is to it. Agreed. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you on the next one. All right.